Okay, let's get started. I would like to welcome everybody who's joining us for today's webinar presentation, and really everybody who's joining us for this webinar series. This is actually the second webinar series that we're having this year in 2018. The first series had a group of fantastic speakers discussing a wide variety of topics connected to implant placement, guided surgery, orthodontics, and it was very clinically focused. The point of this webinar series is really to give practical step-by-step -step instructions on how to use Blue Sky Plan to accomplish a lot of those goals that you could do directly in your practice to benefit you, your practice, and of course, your patients. Please let me know if you hear me okay. You could type directly into that chat box. So we're going to be focusing on how to use the software, the step-by-step -step process flows, where to click, what to press in order to get all of this accomplished. And I think this series really is not only directed and focused on new users who are getting familiar with Blue Sky Plan, but it's also focused on existing users. I constantly hear comments and feedback, wow, I didn't know Blue Sky Plan could do that. I didn't know the feature existed. So I think existing Blue Sky Plan users are able to learn a lot from, this, from these presentations as well. So we're going to be starting from the beginning. We're going to be discussing everything connected to Blue Sky Plan. And for the topic of today, we're going to be discussing introduction to guided surgery. If you have any questions during today's presentation, please enter them into the chat box. Information about upcoming presentations in this series can be found on the blueskyplan.com website with links there to register as well. And of course, please make sure to enter your details into the webinar attendance form so we can send you the CE credit that's usually sent via email within around one week after the webinar presentation. The topic for tonight is introduction to guided surgery. We're starting at the beginning. We're gonna be discussing topics connected to CT scans, DICOM images, opening Blue Sky Plan, first downloading Blue Sky Plan, loading the DICOMs and saving, saving the cases. My name is Michael Saltzman. I'm the director of digital products at Blue Sky Bio. Blue Sky Plan originally was focused for a very long time on guided surgery and treatment planning. And more recently, we've expanded that to include additional modules, including orthodontics. And we're working on rolling out modules connected to crown and bridge and denture fabrication. In addition to Blue Sky Plan, we have additional digital products as well, including biobigbox.com, which is our HIPAA compliant file transfer and backup system. So you're definitely encouraged to check that out. And that's integrated into Blue Sky Plan as well. We'll be touching on that in future presentations. We have BioView, which is our patient education app, which could be uh, downloaded for the Android or uh, Mac platforms. And that includes many high resolution 3D videos that could be used to educate patients as well as the ability to take a photo of the patient, drop in implants, and really explain the procedure that's going to be happening. In addition, we're going to be rolling out shortly in our next public release a new digital platform called Lab Pronto. That's going to be introduced first and foremost in the Blue Sky Plan software. And that is going to be a fantastic service where orders could be placed both for digital and physical products. When the order is placed, it's sent out to our network of approved labs, and the lab that has time available to handle the case will be able to handle it and send it back to you with a reasonably very good turnaround time at a reasonable price. So that's something that's going to be introduced first into Blue Sky Plan, and then will be its own web-based service at labpronto.com. So we're very excited to be rolling out that functionality as well. For Today's presentation, we're going to be discussing what is guided surgery, everything connected to CTs and DICOMs, getting it into the software, setting up the case, understanding the different views and mouse functionality. We're going to be showing very basically how to drop in an implant and a crown or a tooth and saving the cases and the relevant equipment. 
So let's get started. It's important to know what to expect from guided surgery today. When I got involved with guided surgery, which is 10 to 12 years ago, just loading the DICOMs into, the so into a software was a proprietary process that could take weeks. You had to send it out. You had to pay a fee to have it converted, loaded into the software, and then you had to wait to get it back. The guide fabrication took weeks. The patient had to come in for scan appliance to get CT scanned. Often the scans had to be redone if the markers weren't in place. And it was an expensive, long process that could take over a month and could cost over $1,000. I had a doctor call me yesterday, and he, he told me that he was involved with guided surgery. He used guided surgery quite a few years back, and he just stopped because the process was too long and too tedious. And I told him he has to revisit because guided surgery today is a totally different beast. The ability exists to print the guides in your own clinic, in your own office, to do everything in-house. Guide fabrication, design, and printing could be done in, in a matter of hours. And if you don't want to do it in-house and you want to outsource it, you have a variety of very, very qualified labs, and we're making that process a lot more efficient with Lab Pronto that's going to be rolled out. And the turnaround time and the whole process could just be a matter of days. And of course, the fee has dropped very significantly. Somebody who wants to do, uh, do it in-house could really fabricate a surgical guide for one two-implant case with, for a total cost of around $60. So it's really a totally different story than what it's been in the past. And for people that haven't yet got, it, uh, got started with guide surgery, we definitely encourage you to do so and to start using software and fabricating surgical guides. So what is guided surgery? Just, this is a screenshot from a video. On the bottom of the screen, I put uh, the link and how you could find it. And if I include it, I've included in other screens as well, screenshots from other presentations or from videos to show the important and relevant information and to show how you could learn more on the topic. So what is guided surgery? Guided surgery on the simplest level is placing the implant and creating the osteotomy guided through a surgical guide. And the purpose of doing so, the purpose of the surgical guide is to execute the plan that was created in the software, that was created in the Blue Sky Plan software. So then we have to ask, so what's the purpose of the plan? The purpose of the plan is to plan for ideal results, to create prosthetically driven planning for long-term results. And you're creating a plan to achieve maximum results, both in terms of implant placement and in terms of the restoration as well. Dr. Michael Scherer gave a webinar presentation a few weeks ago, and he really summarized the purpose of guided surgery as safety, predictability, and precision. We want the process to be as safe as, poss as possible. We want it to be predictable as possible, eliminating unknowns, eliminating any surprises, and of course, for it to be precise. And in the software, there actually is the ability, if you're doing a post-op CT, to overlay it on the original plan. And I've seen it done for many cases, and the results have been unbelievable, really fantastic, precise, predictable results. So that's what we're looking to achieve with guided surgery. This image, there are many, many different images like it, but it outlines and it demonstrates the point, the importance of the 3D analysis of the patient. When you're viewing something from one angle, it looks totally different. And when you're viewing it from a different angle, you could see something completely different. So the process in the software is to acquire that CT, to load it into the software, to be able to analyze the patient's data and anatomy with full information from all different angles using 3D and 2D in order to proper, properly plan the implant placement and create that surgical guide. And of course, in order to do that, we have to be aware of the relevant anatomy. Dr. Sheldon Lerner gave a presentation on basic anatomy and surgical histology for guided surgery. This presentation was a few years ago, but since human anatomy hasn't changed that much, it's still very relevant. And of course, you're all very encouraged to check out that presentation to learn more. And these are topics that I've been touching on, but aren't the focus of tonight's presentation. So I'm just outlining and pointing that out as we go along. Now, in the treatment planning process, and really any planning process uh, with the Blue, 
Blue Sky Plan software, you're dealing with three distinct stages. You're dealing with the data that you're inputting into the software. You're dealing with the plan that's being created in the software. And you're dealing with what's being exported from the software. In our situation, the data is being acquired using a CT scanner or a model scan. And the reason that we need both of those is because both of them together create the big picture, create what we need. The CT scan shows us all about the patient's anatomy, and it's great for showing us inside the bone, inside the soft tissue, but it works based on Hounsfield units. Hounsfield units is the measurement of density for different parts of the anatomy. And we'll see in the software that there's a slider underneath the 3D view that lowers and raises the Hounsfield unit's threshold. And depending on where that threshold is, you're going to see more or less anatomy. The anatomy shape changes. You could think of it more as a grayscale and less as a zero or one or a black and white. So while we're, it's great for analyzing data, it doesn't provide a rigid, well-defined structure that can be used for surgical guide fabrication. So therefore, we have the model scan as well. The model scan doesn't show us what's going on inside the anatomy, but it does provide this rigid and well-defined structure. So when we plan using the CT scan and the model scan, and we fabricate the surgical guide based on that model scan, then we're able to accomplish everything. And in the Blue Sky Plan software, you're able to merge the model scan with the CT scan. You're able to deal with many different surfaces, uh, many different sets of data that's acquired and put it all together in the Blue Sky Plan software. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on today, setting up the case, importing the CT scan and understanding the basics of the Blue Sky Plan software. Then, of course, we have the plan, implant placement, tooth placement, and then the surgical guide, which executes in reality the plan from the computer to the patient's mouth at the time of surgery. Now, garbage in, garbage out, it's a term that's used in mathematics, it's a term that's used in programming, but it's also very relevant here. We can't underestimate the importance of proper data acquisition. If we don't acquire the data properly and we're not careful with how it's done, then we're not going to have ideal results. So we need to be very careful, both in terms of the CT scan and in terms of the model scan or the impression scan or how the impression is created. We need to make sure we're doing it properly in order to have quality data for planning and for effective surgical procedure. Okay, in terms of acquiring the data, obviously we're dealing with a CT scanner. Blue Sky Bio carries the CareStream CT scanner, and that's what acquires the CT scan. The data that's outputted from the CT scan is called DICOM files. It's just the type of data that the CT scanner creates, similar, similar to how Microsoft Word creates a Word file. The, CT scanner creates DICOM files, and we're going to touch upon that um, more as we get to the software. This is the Shining 3D scanner, also carried by Blue Sky Bio. This is great for scanning models. It sells for $5,000, so it's a great option. It's something that you can keep in your clinic. You can use it to scan the models. It enables you to load it directly into Blue Sky Plan afterwards. If you don't have a, a desktop scanner, that's not a problem. Your local lab should be able to scan models you know, and, and give you the STL files as a result of that scan to load into the software. Just two words on proper data acquisition. The recommendations, and again, this is a slide from Dr. Michael Scherer's presentation, Avoiding Rookie Problems, is soft tissue separation, as we see in that top right photo where the soft tissue separated from the teeth and occlusal separation. And we can see in the images on the left side of the screen how it affects the output of the CT scan. On the left, we see that the soft tissue is kind of merged and mushed together. And on the right side, we see that everything, the anatomy, is much more distinct and defined. And we see that on the next slide as well. Not ideal scan on the left and ideal scan on the right. And also, we'll we're going to discuss some software functionality that demonstrates if the patient's mouth is open, even ever so slightly during the CT scan, it helps us tremendously to isolate the different jaws and to uh, treatment plan. So we're going to be taking a look at that in just a few minutes. Just to respond to a question that came in, Blue Sky Plan 
collude DICOM images. Every CT scanner can output DICOM images. It's the industry standard. So if you get a CT scan from a scan center from wherever, and it's not a DICOM, then you just ask them to re-export. You don't have to have the patient re-scanned. Okay, with the same data from the original CT scan, they could re-export the data as DICOM images. They could send that to you, and you could load that into the Blue Sky Plan software. So before we jump directly into the software, Blue Sky Plan is an advanced treatment planning software for computer guided surgery developed and distributed by Blue Sky Bio. We have the buttons there to download the PC version and to download the Mac version. We have a version both for a PC and for a Mac. So the user could go and could download whatever they like. This is the blueskyplan.com website. And here we see it's updated a bit more from that previous screenshot. Advanced software for surgical guides, ortho, Ceph, and we're gonna be adding and updating this as we roll out the denture module and in the future, a crown and bridge module. Here, if we scroll down quickly on the page, first of all, we have the ability to download the software, which we're gonna do in just a minute. You have the ability to join the Blue Sky Bio user group. Now, this is a group on Facebook. It's a fantastic group. It's also monitored by Blue Sky Bio. There's a lot of clinicians that are very generous, generous with their time. Uh, they also answer questions. If you have any questions regarding functionality, any clinical questions, really any questions at all connected to Blue Sky Bio or Blue Sky Plan or any of our products, it's a fantastic group. So uh, check it out on Facebook. It's a Blue Sky Bio user group. There's a link at the end of the presentation directly to the group. Um, and as we scroll down, we could see some more information regarding the software. We see links to purchase relevant products for guided surgery, including the metal cylinders, the fixation pins, uh, cone beam markers, which we'll discuss in future presentations, and 3D printers. As we go down a bit more, we have different labs that could provide uh, services connected to treatment planning, connected to surgical guide fabrication. And again, we're going to be optimizing all of this even more when we roll out uh, Lab Pronto. Just to point out two more things on the Blue Sky Bio website, the education section is a fantastic resource. Here we have courses that have already been recorded on various topics, surgical guides, orthodontics, endodontics, uh, cephalometric, dentures, and we're already even starting to add some regarding uh, crown and bridge. So the education section is fantastic resources. We have the training courses. We also have the webinars. So the webinars here, you can register for future webinars in the series and other webinars, and you can also view past and recorded webinars. So the webinar series that I mentioned in 2018 that already happened, you could watch those here and even presentations from earlier years as well. And assuming that there's no technical difficulties with this recording, this recording and the other presentations in this series are gonna be available here for future reference or for sharing with others. Okay, just look, let's take a look at some of the questions. Yes, the DICOM images include all the views that we're gonna see in the software. The software renders the images into the 3D and in, into the various uh, 2D views. So we'll take a look at that in just, in just a minute. Okay, and regarding scanners, if the scanner could save an STL file, then it could be imported into Blue Sky Plan. Blue Sky Plan could load, it could input uh, CT scans that create DICOMs, which is pretty much everyone out there, and scanners that could create STL files. Both the DICOMs and STL files could be imported into Blue Sky Plan. Okay, let's switch over. Let's take a look actually about downloading the Blue Sky Plan software. So we're gonna to choose to download the PC version because that's what I'm on right now. And we can look at the terms. We can also look at the software requirements. Now this is important. If you want the software to operate the way it should, we're dealing with high quality DICOM images, many different surfaces, many different STL uh, models that could all be imported. The software is processing everything and rendering them and generating them. So 
we really do recommend either, you know, to use the most powerful computer that you have in your clinic, or if you're going to looking to get a new one, then try to meet uh, the requirements, both in terms of the RAM, of the computer, also in terms of the video card, and the processor. Okay, so that's important to take a look at. Let's agree to terms and download. The download starts in the bottom left of the screen. So that's important to know this. I'm using Chrome right now. The download's running in the bottom left of my screen. And we have the option of show in folder or open when done. Show in folder will show it to you when it completes downloading. And open when done will start running the file as soon as the download is complete. So I've selected that option. And installation starts automatically. I'm going to select no for a minute. And let's jump over to Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. This screen also comes up telling you that the software is downloading with some links to valuable resources and, again, to join uh, that Facebook group. Let's jump over now to Internet Explorer and let's just take a look at that quickly there. Again, we have the same blueskyplan.com. I'm going to go ahead and click again and download PC version. Now, what happens in Internet Explorer, once we click Agree to Terms and Download, it opens up the page telling you that the software is downloading but the download is actually visible on that previous tab where we clicked the Agree to Terms and Download button. On the bottom of that screen, we have the option to run and to save. So we're going to go ahead and click on Save. The file downloaded, so we're going to go ahead and click on Run and go through the installation process. Now, the software, as you can see, is free to download free to register. You could put on in as many computers as you like. And uh, you could use it to treatment plan and to create surgical guide guides for all implant systems and all guided surgical kits. Although, of course, we definitely recommend checking out the Blue Sky Bio implants. OK, so first thing to notice during the installation process is you have the option to select your language. So not only does Blue Sky Plan exist for a PC and for a Mac, it also exists in a variety of different languages. You can take a look at the user agreement, click I accept the agreement, and click Next. And here we have two checkboxes. Create a desktop shortcut. You should definitely check that. That's going to create a shortcut on your desktop so you can launch the software in the future just by double-clicking that icon. and the second box, make Blue Sky Plan a default program to open the ICOM files. You should check that one as well. And what that means is that once you have a CT scan, once you have those DICOMs on your computer, you could start loading the case and launching the software automatically just by double clicking on one of those DICOM images. So it becomes your default program for opening DICOMs and to launch the software and start loading a CT scan is as simple as just double clicking on one of those DICOM images. We're going to go ahead and click the Install button. And we can see that the installation takes a minute or two. OK, and we have the checkbox here, which is checked, Launch Blue Sky Plan. I'm going to go ahead and click on Finish. So now we have the Blue Sky Plan software open in front of us. We're going to go through the different views in the screen layout in a minute. Let's first load a CT scan, and that will help us explain the screen layout. To start a new case, you go to File, New Project. And we have two options here, New Project and Open Project. The difference is New Project is to load a new DICOM set to start a new patient to load a new CT scan. Open project is if you already have a Blue Sky Plan project that you've started and you've saved, and now you want to come back to work on it or to see it, then you're opening a new project. The same way that Microsoft Word has new or open, that's what we have here as well. And what Blue Sky Plan creates is a, is a Blue Sky Plan file that contains in it the, the DICOM files, the CT scan, and all the planning that's done 
that's connected to it. So in the future, if you want to come back to that case, you just need to load that one Blue Sky Plan file. You don't need to reload the DICOMs or anything. It's all contained within Blue Sky Plan. You just double click, you open that case, and that's how you open um, an existing case. So open project will take you to open an existing case, and new project will take you to load a new set of DICOM images. Now, when you go ahead and click on new project, you have here a library of your computer. You have all the different drives and folders that are on your computer. And what you want to do is you want to navigate to the location of the CT scan. OK? Now, we also mentioned previously that if you have the CT scan, you could just double click it and open it. Or this is another way of doing it to navigate to the CT scan. We have the shortcut buttons going across the top. Now, a lot of times that's missed and not noticed by users. The shortcut buttons makes it much easier to navigate to the desired location. Desktop goes to your desktop. Documents to My Documents. Downloads is if you are going to your My Downloads folder. If somebody sends you a CT scan via biobigbox.com, for example, then it will get uh, downloaded to there. Network, just in a, in a word, um, if you have a network in your practice and you want to store the cases or store the DICOMs in a central location, then you could access from any computer that you've, that uh, that's on the network, you could access that data and load it into Blue Sky Plan. So Blue Sky Plan should be installed on all the different computers, and you should keep the data in a central location that's accessible by all the different computers. And then we have the CD drive, which accesses your CD drive. And if you're still getting... Uh, CT scan sent to you on a CD, then you should really tell your scan center about biobigbox.com. That just will help everybody out. Now, we've built the importation process of DICOMs to be as easy as possible. And what I mean by that, first of all, is that Blue Sky Plan can load anything that's, that's, that's connected to a CT scan. We can load compressed DICOM images, which means that all the DICOMs are in compressed into a single file. We could uncompressed DICOM images, which is what we see here. We see a long list of these DICOM DCM files of these DICOM images. And what this what these DICOM images are, and we could see the, the images when we move our mouse over the file list, is that these DICOM images are 2D images taken around the central point of rotation, which is which is the patient. The CT scan acquires all of these different images and the software renders everything into different 2Ds and different 3D images. So here we see uncompressed icons. We can also load zipped folders. You don't even have to unzip it. If you get a zipped folder from a scan center, you could just click on it and go ahead and choose OK, and it will load that for you. You could even select just one of those DICOM images and press the OK button, and it loads. In addition, if you select a folder that's at the top level of a hierarchy or just your CD drive that has many different folders in it, the software will go ahead and search for the different CT scans and present them. Let's go ahead and click on OK. And what we see now on the screen, on the left side of the screen, is the different CT scans that the software has found. Right now in the folder that I selected, there's one scan. If there would have been multiple scans from different patients or if it would have been a CD that has multiple patients on it, then you'll have different rows here, and you'll just go ahead and select the relevant row. Okay, so you click on it once, it's highlighted in blue, just like we have now, and you go ahead and click on OK to proceed. This screen allows us to align the patient and to define our field of view. So if the patient is facing forward or up as they should be in the relevant CT scanner, then you don't have to rotate the patient at all. But if the patient isn't aligned perfectly and you want to modify the place, the orientation, and you just left click, grab, and drag along these blue circles, and you can see how it reorients the patient. This is the type of thing that, again, a few years back might have required a rescan of the patient. And now we could just simply just rotate the patient and realign them in the software. In addition to the alignment, which in most situations you probably don't need to touch, you're able to define the field of view. To define the relevant field of view, you just left click to grab and drag any of these yellow borders 
and move it to limit it to the relevant field of view. You can include part of the posing arch if you like. And you could go ahead and do this in any of the views. And the point really is twofold. Number one is it will have less processing requirements to process the data in the software. So that will help uh, making the use of the software more efficient. In addition, it, and more importantly, it will enlarge the relevant data. So it takes up the relevant views and you could see it very clearly. Okay, we're gonna click on okay. We wait a second and the software loads the data. So the process that I mentioned earlier that used to take weeks to do and you had to send it out and it's proprietary, we just did in around a minute. So now we have the software, we have our different views and we have our CT scan. We're now going to go through the different views and explain what we're seeing and how to use them. So we're going to start with the bottom left, which is our 3D view, and it's probably the most self-explanatory. We see, obviously, the patient. Under the patient scan, we have that density threshold that you could grab and drag with your left mouse button. And watch as you raise the density threshold you're only seeing the more dense anatomy. So the less dense anatomy is disappearing. And as we lower the density threshold, we see more anatomy. So you can understand clearly what I mentioned earlier, that it's problematic to create a surgical guide based on this, because as you play with the threshold, the anatomy and the anatomy size is adjusting. So if you want a perfect fit, you really need something that's rigid and well-defined and that's our STL scan, that's our model scan, which we'll discuss more in future presentations. Uh, just a couple of words about the 3D view. First of all, you could rotate what you're seeing by using that bottom left image of a head. And if you click on any of the arrows, then it rotates the scan accordingly. Another way to rotate the image is that second icon to the right of the 3D view, change view angle, and you could simply click and you could watch it rotate. And of course, you could hold down your left mouse button and rotate freehand. Just grab and drag to move the scan around. Now to the top right of every view, you could see that there's a maximize button. And if you click on the maximize button, it does just that. It takes up your entire screen. You can analyze whatever you like to analyze or plan, and then just click on that button again, and it'll put the view back in place. And that's true with all of our different views. Okay, let's move along from here to our axial view. The axial view is the top middle image. And if you imagine a deck of cards, and you imagine those cards in the deck, and you're moving through the deck, up and down, that's what we're looking at in our axial view. And you could see in our top left view and the bottom right view, that as we're moving through those images, that blue line is moving accordingly. The blue line is representing to us the exact location of the slice that we're viewing. Just to make the point a little even more clear, let's turn on, for example, in our 3D view, our axial projection. So once again, if we move through the slices in the axial view, we can see the indicators in the other views moving accordingly, showing us the exact location of that slice that we're looking at. And if we even turn off that 3D image for a second, then we can see basically our axial slice also in our 3D view as well. Let's turn that back on. And I did that by clicking on the third icon from the top and unchecking and rechecking the rendering button. And to put on this axial projection, I went to view 3D and clicked axial projection to turn it on. And I'm going to go ahead and clicking it again to turn off that axial projection. So that's what we see in our top middle view in our axial view. Now this curve that we have here is called our panoramic curve. And that's placed automatically by the software. 
Again, that's something that the user used to have to create. Now it's placed directly by the software. It could be fine-tuned in the software. If we want to make it longer so that our panoramic view, our bottom right view, includes more of the anatomy, we could just grab these squares and go ahead and drag them to include more anatomy. And there's a lot of functionality here. If you wanted to move the whole curve, you could grab the square with your left mouse button and go ahead and move it. And we even have the ability to define uh, two separate curves for the upper and lower arch. And you could see that here as we switch, we can make any adjustments that we want here as well. And the software will remember each curve individually, and you could switch back and forth. We even have a custom curve. If you want to create a third curve for the occlusion, it could be it could be done there as well. So just know that that functionality exists, and you could play around with it um, in your software. So that's our axial view. We discussed this panoramic curve. And what the panoramic curve does takes us to the panoramic image on the bottom right. And what we're seeing in the panoramic image is all of the slices that are between the inner yellow curve and the outer yellow curve. So we're seeing a mashup of those slices. And if we wanted to limit that, that field of view, that range of slices, we could just use our left mouse button to grab the circle on the corner of the curves and either expand it or contract it. And that adjusts what we're seeing in all of our views. We also have the ability, if you don't want to see a mashup of all the slices within that range, you just want to see a particular slice, then you could go here to the second to third button on the right and click it once. And we can notice that our yellow curve moved from having two curves that were the outside borders to having one curve, indicating the exact location of the slice that we're looking at. And if we move through the slices, and you could see that yellow curve in the top middle axial view moving accordingly. If we click that third button again, it switches back to our inner and our outer margins, and we see a mashup of all the slices in between. Now, an easy way to remember the correlation between the view and these colorful indicators it's just by looking at the indicators surrounding that particular view. The axial view, for example, has blue indicators corresponding to the blue lines in the other views. So as we move through the slices in the axial view, and we could do that by grabbing and moving the slider, or we could do that by rolling the wheel on our mouse. We're going to discuss mouse functionality in a bit. But as we go through those slices for the view that's surrounded by blue indicators, we see the blue line moving. And we're going to see that now in the cross-section view as well, in our top left view. The cross-section view is showing us slices separated by a millimeter between each slice. And you can see the indicators around the, around the particular image. And you can see that their color. And you can see how it corresponds to those three colorful lines in the bottom right panoramic view and the three colorful lines in the top middle axial view. So as we go through our cross-section slices, which is showing us vertical slices of the patient's anatomy, we could see those three colorful lines moving to show us the ideal, the exact location of what we're viewing in those three slices. And again, just to drive the point home and to make it a bit more clear, let's turn on in our 3D view, our cross-section projection, and we could watch as we go around the arch, we see that vertical slice. We see the location of the vertical slice, and that corresponds to the image, the middle image that we have there. And again, the image one millimeter to the right and one millimeter to the left. OK, the last view that we haven't touched upon yet is our top right view, and that's our tangential view. The purpose of the tangential view is to show us 360 degrees around a particular anatomy or around an implant. And as we move through those slices, we could see in the top middle axial view that that green indicator 
is rotating accordingly. And that green indicator is showing us the exact angle of what we're viewing in the top right tangential view. We could also change the, look, the angle just by grabbing with your left mouse button, that green arrow, and grabbing and dragging. And we could see how that tangential view in the top right updates accordingly. So that's our software screen layouts, our different views. Just to summarize, we have in the bottom left our 3D view, which is exactly that with the 3D image. We have our slider in the bottom for the density threshold for Hounsfield units. And as we raise the density, we see less anatomy. We could rotate the view by clicking on the arrows surrounding the head in the bottom left. We could also rotate the view by clicking on the second icon and choosing whatever orientation we like. And in all the views, we could go ahead and maximize the view by clicking that top right button. That was our 3D view. We then went to our axial view, the top middle view. That's our deck of cards that moves ups and down through the deck as we go ahead and use the slider and move through that. And again, we see the blue indicator line and other views moving accordingly. We then went down to our panoramic view, the bottom right, and we see the range of data being visualized in the panoramic view on the bottom right based on our panoramic curve in that axial view and the data between those two yellow lines. If we want to switch to just a single one millimeter slice, we use the third button, click it once, and we see that the two yellow lines turned into one yellow line, click it again, and it turns back. Uh, another note is that both in the panoramic view and the cross sections view in the top left, we're dealing with one millimeter slices when we're dealing with slices. You're able to change that. I, there's no need, wouldn't recommend playing around with it, but if you want, you could. Uh, right now it's set to one millimeter. You should know that the functionality is there and exists. And just a note in general about blue sky plan in general, every setting could be modified. Usually what we try to do, and we're going to discuss this more in future presentations, is to enter the data, have the software do computations automatically, have everything as automatic and a computational list for the user as possible. But we allow everything to be changed and to be modified. So if you ever want to change a setting, it's there. You just have to know the correct place to change it but you should know that really pretty much everything in the software could be modified or updated or, or changed to your particular needs um, as needed. And on that note, I'm just going to point out the different modes that we have in the software. We have a viewing mode, a normal, and an advanced mode. OK, the viewing mode is if you just want to review a case, if somebody sends you a case, or you want to send a case to somebody who's not interested in making changes, they just want to take a look at it. They could open the software in the viewing mode. They won't be able to make any changes. They'll be able to use all the functionality to view the case. Um, but they can't edit anything. They can't change anything. We have the normal vote mode, which what we're in now, which as we discuss different surgical guide fabrication, you're going to see is a mode that doesn't really require computations by the user. Everything is as automated as possible. And then we have the advanced mode, and we'll discuss this later on as well, where the user could really customize every setting in the software. If they want to do their own computations, they want to put their own numbers in, they want to change to customize a surgical guide. So it's for an advanced user who's very comfortable with the software, and they want to use the advanced functionality, then they could go ahead and switch to that advanced mode. We have self cephalometric mode as well for cephalometric analysis. And in future versions, we have um, additional modes for our additional modules that uh, we're rolling out. OK, so we discussed our views. And now we're going to discuss the mouse functionality. The mouse functionality in the 2D views is consistent throughout the 2D views. If you hold down your right mouse button and move your mouse forward, then you're zooming in. Move your mouse backwards, you're zooming out. The whole time, I'm holding down my right mouse button. If you're using a mouse that has a wheel on it, and we definitely recommend that because it makes the functionality easier, you could hold down the wheel of your mouse and hold it down like a button. Don't scroll it, just hold it down. 
and you could grab and drag any of the 2D views. The left mouse button, wherever you click, that becomes active. The, those colorful lines all jump to that location, and as we discussed, the colorful lines represent what we're viewing in the other views. So wherever you left click, the lines jump to that location, and the other views update accordingly. When we have an implant in the case, if you have multiple implants and you left click on an implant, then that implant becomes active and it becomes visible in all the different views. Now the wheel of the mouse, we said if you hold it down, you could grab and drag. If you scroll it, then you're running through this license. Now we also have functionality. We have buttons on the top in the horizontal toolbar. If you're using a touchpad or if you're using a tablet, then you could use the buttons on the top to toggle the different mouse functionality. So we have the mode that we're in now. We have to be able to zoom in and out using the touchpad or using the screen. And we have to move. And that's another way to grab and to drag. So if you're using a mouse with a wheel, then everything can be done access directly from the mouse. If you're using a touchpad or if you're using a, a tablet, then you could then you could uh, use those buttons. And let me just clarify, when I say tablet, I don't mean an iPad type tablet um, because the software won't run on a normal tablet. But if you have one of those laptop tablets, we have a lot of users using those type of tablets that either with detachable screens or with touch screens or screens that fold over, it could be used as a tablet. Uh, then you could use the Blue Sky Plan software on those if, they, if it meets the requirements and you could use the buttons in the horizontal toolbar that uh, I, I just pointed out. Okay. Let's drop an implant in just to take a look at some of the functionality. Uh, we're not gonna be discussing uh, implant placement in this webinar presentation. But let's go ahead and use that to demonstrate other functionality in the software that, that's relevant. We have in the horizontal toolbar different buttons with a red plus next to it. We have add implant, we have add nerve, add tooth, and actually we're gonna add the nerves before we go ahead and add the implant. And next to that, just so you are aware of it, we have the same icons without that red plus. And what these buttons do, they toggle visibility on and off. So if you want to hide the implant, the nerve, the tooth, then that's how you do it. So again, the buttons with the red plus add the different elements and the buttons without the red plus toggle the visibility on and off. Okay, before the implant, let's go ahead to and identify our nerves. The software works based on panels. The panels you could think of as a little control panel for relevant functionality. So here's our list of our panels. We're going to go to, we're going to open the panel to add a nerve by clicking the add nerve button. And we could see that the nerve list, also visible here, opens up in a panel on the right side of the screen. And Let me just turn this off for a second. Okay. We're going to zoom in. Okay. First, sorry, let's rotate so we can see the entrance of the mental foramen. And then we're going to go ahead and click on add nerve. And we're going to use functionality to detect nerve. And here we're able to either click in the 3D view or are we able to click in the entrance of the mental frame in, in the, the relevant 2D slice? Right now, we're going to zoom in and we're going to click on the entrance of the mental foramen. Now, the software identifies the nerve and draws the nerve automatically. We could see it in our different views. And we should go ahead and definitely review the placement. We could review it both really in all of our views in the panoramic in the cross-section and tangential view. If we want to modify any of the placement, then we use our left mouse button to grab and to drag any of the nodes. 
and it adjusts the nerve accordingly. We could go through our cross-section slices and we see that yellow circle resembles or identifies location of the nerve. And we could confirm that the nerve placement is correct. Okay, we could go ahead and add the second nerve. Again, we're gonna click detect nerve. The option also exists to click add nerve and then add nerve, I'll show you. In the 2D slice, for example, in the panoramic, you could just go ahead and left click and place those nodes and place those dots in the 2D view, okay? Just make sure if you're doing it that way, make sure between the first nerve and the second nerve, you click the add nerve button. Otherwise, you're gonna have one long string that gets a whole mumble jumble mess and uh, you'll need to delete it and redo it. So between the nerves, click the add nerve button. To delete the nerve, any nerve, you could just click the red X and it deletes it. Also, you have the ability here to change the color of the nerve um, so if we want to go ahead and use the detect nerve functionality to demonstrate it again, click detect nerve, and the software draws the nerve for you. Okay, so this is a demonstration of how to identify the nerve. We have our nerve panel. We have the ability to delete nerves. We have the ability to change the color. So that's all in our nerve panel. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. And what we continue to do with the software is try to automate as much as possible. And it doesn't mean that the user shouldn't review what's being automated. They should definitely review what's being automated. But we try to automate, get a good solution, and then the user should review and modify as necessary. So that's the functionality to identify the nerves. Moving along. Just to point out, in the bottom right of the screen, uh, you have the density level. Okay, so as you move your mouse around on the screen, it reads out for you the Hounsfield units. We discussed earlier the Hounsfield units is the measurement of density of the particular anatomy. So as you move over teeth, for example, you see that number jump up. And as you move over soft tissue, you see that number jump down. Okay, so just uh, another interesting piece of information. It's a good way to check uh, bone density. Okay, um, adding implants. Add an implant. We have the icon of the implant. We have, an, we have an icon of implant with the red plus next to it. I'll, I'll uh, address some of the questions that are coming in in a, in a bit. If you click on that, then it brings you up to a dialog box to add an implant. Here we're looking at the Blue Sky Bio implants. You could select other implant systems from the drop-down list. We've recently added many additional implant systems. I think we're over 20 now, and that includes also their guided surgical kits so if you treatment plan with any of those systems, you'll be able to create a drilling report. You'll be able to get the proper information. The calculations are automated, as we discussed earlier, um, not to discourage people from using Blue Sky Bio implants. That's definitely encouraged and recommended. OK, so to select an implant, you select the implant orientation first. You select the company. You select uh, the system. Here we'll look at the Biomax implants. Uh, we'll select the implant uh, platform and then the relevant length. Now, this is important to notice that you have the platform, which is generally the width of the implant on the bottom left. People contact us with support and say, how come I only see a fraction of your implants in the system? And the answer is because they're not looking, they're not selecting the platform first. They're just looking at the implant list without changing the platform and they're only seeing a portion of the implants. So take note of that platform on the bottom left. OK, let's just select an implant here. Press OK. And now we left click really in any view 
we could left click and decide where we want to drop the implant. Now once the implant is dropped, you could left click, grab and drag and move it around. Rotating it, very simple. If you grab and rotate to the left, then you're moving it mesially to the right, you're moving it distally. If you right click on an implant, and you have a variety of different options that you have here. You could duplicate it, you can add an abutment, you could delete it, you could pivot it, all your different options. So actually we're gonna remove it, we're gonna click remove. And instead of clicking add implant, we're gonna click here, add tooth. And this is generally probably the recommended way of adding an implant together with the tooth. So if you select the tooth and then check the implant button, then it has the last used implant or you could click on it and select the relevant implant that you want. But when you do it this way, the advantage is that you're dropping in together both the implant and the crown. Okay, so you could go ahead and you can modify, you can modify uh, the placement, you can modify the orientation and update it as necessary. Now, if we double click on the implant, then we open the implant panel. So here we have, again, the ability to customize uh, the settings for the implant. We could change the transparency for the implant if we just want to see an outline. Um, we could go ahead and replace it. We could go ahead and add an abutment. And we have different settings here for surgical guide fabrication as well. So again, we have the ability to drop the implant in. We could drop it in with the crown. We could also drop it in together with the abutment. And we have different settings, which we're going to discuss more extensively in the future regarding uh, guided surgical fabrication. What we're going to present now is how to use the measuring tool, which is really the last functionality that we're going to be presenting for today's presentation. And that is simply by clicking the distance measure ruler in the toolbar on the top of the screen. You click once at the location where you want to start measuring and click again where you want to stop measuring. And to use the tool again, you just click and click. Okay, what you need to remember is to stop using the tool, click on the distance measure once again, and that turns it off and returns to the normal mouse functionality. And we could see that those distance, distance measurements are connected to the particular slice. So if we move through the different slices, then the measurements um, move as well. So they're relevant to the particular slice which we did the measurement on. Also, if the numbers are, let's, are in your way, you could just grab and drag and move them out of the way. And this is also a good time to point out our undo functionality and redo functionality that we have in the software. You have the arrows in the top left to undo and to redo. Okay, to save a case, you go to File, Save Project. If it's your first time saving the case, just like in Microsoft Word, it asks you to name the case and to select where you want to save it. So you could go ahead and identify a location on your desktop, give it the relevant name, and save it to that location. If you've already saved the case and you just made changes, then you could go to File, Save Project, and it just automatically saves it, or you could click on the Save Project icon. 
Just a, a side note, we also have the ability to save project locked, which means that you could send your case to somebody else for review and they won't be able to make any changes unless they have the password. So you could click save project locked. It asks where you want to save the case. And then it asks you to enter a password. So if the receiver, if the recipient wants to be able to make changes, then they need to have the password. Otherwise, they won't be able to make any changes to the treatment plan. Okay. Uh, to address a question that came in there, you don't need a username and a password to update an existing an existing version of the software on my on your computer. Okay, if you update, this is an important point. If you update the software to a new version, you don't need to uninstall the previous version. You could just install the new version on top of it. And you don't need to acquire a new license. And if you have export credits, which we'll discuss more in the future, then they stay intact. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, the first time, the first time you open the software, you'll be asked to register. So you just put your details into the software and you click the submit form button. It's really, it's an instant registration. Once you click the submit form button, within a couple of seconds, you're gonna have a notification that comes up saying that your software has been licensed successfully. So that's it, okay? There's, you know, there's no need to copy and paste codes or anything anymore. You just put your details in, you click submit form and you get a notification back that the software has been licensed successfully. Okay, um, I'm gonna be wrapping up with a final slide here. Uh, let's see, how do I bring that up? If there are questions, then please feel free to enter them into the chat box. Now is a good time. Here we go. Okay, where can I learn more? So obviously, we have additional presentations as part of this webinar series, and we're going to be delving into more advanced functionality and covering a lot more functionality. And it's really exciting because we're going to be rolling out with a lot of new functionality in the coming weeks and in the coming months, and we'll be able to present and discuss that new functionality in the webinar series. Now, where can I learn more information? So the Blue Sky Bio user group on Facebook is a fantastic resource. As I mentioned earlier, you could post questions there about Blue Sky plan, about treatment plans, about any Blue Sky Bio product. And we monitor the group as well as many other clinicians who have great feedback and great opinions. So that is a great resource. We also have blueskyplan.com that we showed at the beginning of the presentation. There's tons of educational information there. In addition to the educational information, we have video courses, we have past recorded webinars, we have information regarding upcoming live events that are being given on different topics that could be seen via our website or that could be seen, uh, a list of upcoming events can be seen via our website or via the Blue Sky uh, Bio user group. So blueskyplan.com is really a fantastic resources, resource connected to everything Blue Sky Plan. Uh, for support, you can email plan at blueskybio.com or, or you could call us. But really for the fastest response, we recommend posting to that uh, Facebook group. And you could see the URL, the web address, the name of the group on the top left of the screenshot. So you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Blue Sky Bio group or you could just search for us and we come up. My contact details direct are in the bottom right of the screen if you want to contact me uh, directly. Uh, to address a question that just came in, yes, you could hide those colorful lines and very, very easy to do so. There's usually a very easy solution to most questions, to all questions regarding the software. So if you could find it yourself, great. 
or you could post to the group or you contact us. But again, hiding those lines is a click. Okay, you click this icon in the horizontal toolbar and those lines disappear. So just to wrap up, a reminder, enter your details into the webinar attendance form so we could send you the CE credit usually within a week or so. Visit the Blue Sky Bio user group. It's a great learning tool. And that's really where a lot of the cutting edge uh, versions of the software is released first and where users are really pushing the limits of what the software could do. So it's fantastic. It's a fantastic community to be part of. Visit the Blue Sky Plan website as well. So I hope to see you at the next uh, webinar presentation, part of this series, the information regarding the schedule, times, and registration, again, is all on blueskyplan.com. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.